Hi dear friends and subscribers, uh, welcome to the Cricket Happening Show and in this part of the Cricket Happening Show we are going to look at the um, look at uh, the Zimbabwe versus West Indies. Right now I have an update for you in the second test match between Zimbabwe and West Indies which is being played at Rozu and well it drinks time with one wicket going as Gabriel has picked up his second wicket. In fact Zimbabwe were doing well, they got a, a good start but now uh, they are looking in real trouble. 43 for 2 as Gabriel has just taken the aggressive VC Subanda, the opener, who was looking very, very good. In fact, uh, he creamed uh, Kemar Roche for three boundaries in a particular over, but right now uh, he is gone as he has actually holed out to mid on. Um, I mean, he has been the wicket taker, Shannon Gabriel. Uh, he has bowled 1.4 overs, one maiden, no runs, and two wickets. That is his bowling analysis. In fact, uh, he first uh, picked up the wicket of, uh, but this was not a good ball actually from uh, uh, Shannon Gabriel, the pace bowler. Actually, it was a full toss, but uh, well, it was not a good shot at all. In fact, uh, uh, it was, um, I would say, Vusi Zibando uh, has not actually, uh, you know, he, he has failed to take advantage of the delivery and he has actually put it in the mid on's hands and he was gone. In fact, Vusi Zibanda has, has been the one who has been doing the majority of the scoring because Vusi Zibanda was caught by Roche at mid on of the bowling of Shannon Gabriel for 32 uh, of 29 balls with 6 fours and, um, and Zimbabwe currently are uh, 43 uh, for 2 here uh, with the first hour of play gone in the second test match between West Indies and Zimbabwe. Uh, in fact, um, as I said, uh, Vusi Zibanda, the opener has been very aggressive. Uh, he creamed Kemar Roche for three boundaries and he also picked up three other boundaries. So six fours in his knock of 32. Uh, in a Zimbabwe score of 43 for two after the first, hours of, for first hour of play on the first day of the second test match between West Indies and Zimbabwe at Rosu. Uh, Brendan Taylor, uh, so both the batsmen now are not. Hamilton Masakaja and Brendan Taylor in the middle. Uh, both of them are, are yet to score. And that is the situation. Now as far as the, the first wicket was concerned, the first wicket that went was of uh, Tino Mavoyo. Now Tino Mavoyo was uh, not really looking very confident, uh, but uh, Shannon Gabriel was the one who actually gave him the breakthrough. In fact, Kemar Roche and Tino Best uh, couldn't uh, make any uh, inroads, but uh, Shannon Gabriel, after coming uh, every over that he has bowled, the first over he picked up the uh, opener Tino Mavoyo's wicket. 42 runs were added by Zimbabwe uh, by these uh, Zimbabwe openers. In fact, West Indies were the ones who actually won the toss. Uh, and they elected to field and Tino Mavoyo was a victim of Gabriel. Now this was a ball which Tino Mavoyo actually uh, thought that the ball is going to swing out uh, and he shouldered arms to the delivery from Gabriel but uh, in fact Tino Mavoyo uh, would have been pretty surprised as Gabriel had a ball which was just uh, holding its line and went on straight and probably nipped a bit uh, in the air and hit the off stump, top of the off stump. So Tino Mavoyo was gone, bowled by Gabriel for eight and then, as I said, Vusi Subanda, the opener, just dismissed. Caught Roche bowled Gabriel for 32. So, uh, the, uh, so that means the, the pair of the captain, uh, Brendan Taylor and Hamilton Masakadza, uh, have, a, have a very, very pretty uh, long job to do. I, I think they have to really, really uh, play superbly. In fact, both of them have to get some major contributions uh, if they have to really make a fight out in this second test. Now... Uh, one thing that I would like to uh, tell here is that um, uh, what uh, Zimbabwe has done uh, in this particular match, it is a bit surprising for me because I am I am always of the belief that Raymond Price, the left arm spinner, uh, is the one uh, who is a who is a sort of a real asset to the team, and it has come as a big big surprise for me here that Raymond Price, the left arm spinner, uh, has been dropped. I mean, Raymond Price, according to me, is the key spinner in the team and uh, it has really, really surprised me uh, to see that uh, Raymond Price, the left arm spinner, is knocked because what Raymond Price brings is, uh, one is he has, is, uh, he has unbridled enthusiasm, uh, he, he keeps it going and when he, he can also bat a bit, in fact, he can uh, hit some, I mean, he can hit some, uh, he can hit some boundaries and he can be a useful order lower down the bat and, uh, does, and Raymond Price is also a good fielder. So it has really come as a surprise. The only reason being uh, they, have bought, uh, they have bought Prosper Utsaya into the team, uh, which is a very, very good move, no doubt about it. The right arm spinner Prosper Utsaya uh, is a wonderful baller, is a very economical baller. But uh, what really beats me here is that why Raymond Price was dropped. 
and uh, probably one would have expected uh, the, uh, the the spinner, the other right arm leg spinner, uh, uh, Creamer, uh, who was really re really taken apart in the first test matches. You know, Creamer couldn't get uh, much out of it, and uh, the Zimbabwe, uh, the West Indies batsmen really went after him, uh, especially uh, Marlon Samuels uh, and then the other players too. Um, everyone actually went after him, but it was a real uh, surprise to see uh, that. Um, uh, I mean, uh, Creamer, Graham Creamer, the right arm leg spinner, uh, was kept in the team. Uh, I would have been, uh, I mean, I would have probably expected that Creamer would have been dropped and, uh, you know, Raymond Price would have played, but it has really come as a surprise. Uh, one only hopes that uh, Zimbabwe are able to do well with this team. Uh, and as you know, Zimbabwe are already one down in this series. And uh, uh, one more thing that I would like to tell here, uh, dear fans, friends, and subscribers, is that uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, have made one chain. They have a test debutant today uh, by the name Sean Williams, and Sean Williams is an um, is a batsman. Uh, in fact, uh, Sean Williams, well, he's an all-rounder. He's an all-rounder. Uh, so he will be the one uh, who, who, as I said, is making his uh, test debut here at Windsor Park Rasu in Dominica. Well, now let's go and see uh, what's the latest update. So basically, this cricket happening show uh, is basically a cricket update. So right now, uh, I'm seeing that uh, play has started. Uh, in fact, Gabriel, uh, who actually took that wicket and uh, drinks was called at that time, with the first hour of uh, first hour of play, uh, Zimbabwe getting 43 runs and losing two wickets. In fact, just now I see that Shannon Gabriel has completed his over. So two overs, uh, he has he, he has two overs, two maidens, no runs, and he has two wickets to his name. So Shannon Gabriel has been the man uh, who has really really um, you know uh, set back uh, Zimbabwe right now. Now. Uh, Kemar Roche has also completed one over now after the drinks interval and that was to Masakaja so the score has moved up by one the score has moved on to 44 for two uh, and Masakaja is off the mark with one Brendan Taylor the captain is set to get off the mark and Zimbabwe of 44 for two uh, in the uh, uh, here at uh, Rasu in the second test match so Shannon Gabriel comes in bowls to Masakaja and Masakaja wouldn't get any runs so I'll keep the commentary going uh, as I mean, I will be just giving you the updates as and when uh, it becomes available. But right now, uh, just talking about some uh, cricket news here. Uh, one is I would like to say the England's uh, Kevin Peterson uh, will be out of action for eight weeks. So what what it essentially means is going to miss the New Zealand tour. I mean, he won't be a part of the uh, English setup uh, against New Zealand. Uh, that is one thing. And another thing is that. Um, uh, he wouldn't be uh, uh, he wouldn't be participating uh, in the IPL 2013, uh, which is about to come, and he won't be a, uh, and he won't be a, he probably won't be a participant for the return matches that New Zealand will play in England. Uh, basically, what the English selectors are doing is that they are they are uh, making sure that Kevin Peterson is there uh, for the big games like the Champions Trophy uh, and the Ashes series. So that's what uh, because Kevin Peterson is a much wanted player and they want him to be fit. So he's having some knee problems and he's ruled out. So that is the news coming in from England. And uh, the other uh, thing that I would like to talk about here is just uh, talking about uh, doing a preview uh, of the South Africa-Pakistan 420 uh, International which is coming up. As you know, South Africa have already taken the uh, series lead. They are 2-1. So the 420 International is going to be very important for Pakistan. Uh, the reason being uh, they have to actually uh, uh, level the series. Uh, I mean, once they level the series, then it will go on to the uh, last match on Sunday and at Benoni, and that would be uh, something uh, great. But um, Pakistan have been struggling, so it is uh, South Africa right now 2-1, and tomorrow South Africa are clashing with Pakistan in the fourth one day international at Kingsmead in Durban. Now, uh, for Pakistan, uh, they have some injury worries. Um, probably Umar Gul and Sohail Tanvir, uh, they would be, uh, I mean, it would be known whether they are match fit uh, only when the match starts. So I am sure Wahab Riyaz who leaked 93 runs, record 93 runs in the last one day international would definitely get the axe. Uh, and um, Sohail Tanvir uh, who has been playing for the Lions franchise in South Africa uh, would be roped in and he has been in some good form there uh, in the county matches. And for Pakistan, uh, what is going to be the case? Uh, Nashid Jamshed uh, has not been really, really delivering. So it's very high time that he delivers uh, and then uh, uh, Yunis Khan has also been struggling whether Asad Shafiq will come into the team. Uh, that is one question. Um, and uh, the, uh, the uh, good thing for Pakistan that is happening is that Shahid Afridi 
uh, is really really looking in great form uh, after smashing one of the biggest sixes ever seen uh, at the Wanderer Stadium in Durban in the third one day international. In fact, even the South African players have said they have not seen a bigger six than what Shahid Afridi hit at the Wanderers in Durban. Such is, his, uh, such is the power uh, of this great Pathan, Shahid Afridi. Uh, well, and uh, South Africa, uh, for them, uh, they too have injury problems. Uh, Fab Du Plis is uh, not going to take his place. So, uh, David Miller uh, might get an opportunity. Graham Smith, the opener, has been struggling in this Bahashi Mahamla and Ibridi Villiers are in some pink form right now. Uh, and uh, Quinton de Kock, uh, whether it would be Quinton de Kock or David Miller, one would know uh, once the match starts tomorrow. Well, uh, other than that, the, the pitch should be suiting the um, uh, Pakistanis. The reason being, the pitch is going to be slow, so there will be something for them. Uh, and uh, Durban is another place where uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, the Indian and Pakistani population there. So there the subcontinental population uh, would be available there. So there'll be some lot of support uh, for the Pakistan team. But what is going to be interesting is that the fourth one day international, uh, uh, one is hoping uh, that Pakistan are able to uh, put it across South Africa so that the Sunday's uh, match, uh, which will be the final one day international, really, really heats up because it will be 2-2 and we will be looking out for the final uh, one day international here at Benoni. Uh, but whether Pakistan can do that, uh, whether South Africa, well, they would like to wrap it up uh, pretty quickly uh, and uh, make it 3-1 um, uh, so that, you know, they can, uh, they can be pretty relaxed when they go to Sunday in Benoni. And I'm sure Pakistan are not going to allow that. It's a must-win match for them uh, to keep the series alive uh, well. So we are going to have a real cracker of a game here in the fourth one-day international at, the, at, the, uh, at uh, Durban. So that's in Kingsmead in Durban. So, well, uh, just uh, going back to the uh, cricket uh, commentary here. Uh, one more thing I would like to know. This is the cricket news. I, I'm sure you all would have known about it, but still, as, as, as long as my cricket show goes, I can talk because there's not much happening uh, in the second test match where play is going, uh, uh, play is underway here uh, at Rosu. Uh, Zimbabwe is still, the score uh, stays at 44 for 2. Uh, it's some tight balling. In fact, uh, as you know, Brendan Taylor and Hamilton Masakadza uh, have to really do the uh, stabilizing job right now because they can't take any risk. In the meanwhile, Kaimar Roche comes in and bowls a fuller length delivery uh, and it's uh, played just in front of square leg by uh, Brendan Taylor and there is no run. So the score, no, in fact, there is a single as it went to uh, went past the square leg umpire and a single has been taken by Brendan Taylor. So Brendan Taylor finally is off the mark now. He's on one. Hamilton Masakadza is on one. Zimbabwe 45 for two. We are in the 14th over. But as I said, it's a test match. But I'm just telling you wh what number of overs are there. But um, one thing, that, one news that I would like to cover, this is uh, talking about the uh, final test match which is coming up in um, uh, Delhi, in the Firosha Kotla. Uh, now, that is between India and Australia, where India have already wrapped up the series. But uh, uh, there are, uh, uh, in fact, uh, Shikhar Dhawan, uh, who hit the fastest international century, fastest century on a test debut uh, by a batsman, uh, wouldn't be taking part in that. It's very sad is out of cricket for probably three or four weeks, which is very sad. And his place is going to be taken. They have, they have brought in Suresh Raina. But I would be of the feeling uh, that India have everything wrapped up. Um, Ajinkya Rahane is also there. So uh, I was, I mean, one does not know uh, whether uh, Ajinkya Rahane would be given an opportunity or Suresh Raina. Now Suresh Raina and Ajinkya Rahane, if you see, both of them uh, can bowl. In fact, Ajinkya Rahane also bowls. Suresh Raina also bowls. But Suresh Raina has more experience. And if India want to really, really uh, put the pressure on the Australians and just see to it that they don't miss upon the opportunity uh, to extract a 4 nil win over Australia, then I'm sure they would plump in for Shreya Shrainer's experience. Uh, so uh, that is very sad, the Shikhar Dhawan. But Australia will be very happy that Shikhar Dhawan uh, is not playing. Uh, and so uh, that's it. And so in the meanwhile, let's, um, I'm going to leave you here uh, from the uh, second test here in the first day's play. But Zimbabwe currently, there's the last update coming up as Kemar Roche is going to bowl the final over. The fifth ball uh, was a full toss which was uh, driven by uh, Masakaja down to mid on and there's no run. So once the last ball is bowled uh, in this particular over, that is the 14th over, where Kemar Roche is the bowler, I will end up my uh, cricket happening show for today. So let's wait and see what happens. Kemar Roche uh, is going back on the top of his bowling run up, uh, rubbing the ball on his trousers very vigorously. And in he comes, passes umpire and bowls to Masakadza, and Masakadza wouldn't get any, any run. 
So the score stays at 45 for two for Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe have a, uh, uh, I would say, an onerous task on hand now uh, with these two players in the middle uh, to really, really resuscitate matters for them. Well, dear fans, friends and subscribers, on this note, your host Ram would like to end the cricket show for today, but uh, promising you that I'll be back, um, uh, back in the same vein tomorrow. Until then, it's goodbye. Thank you.